you know, and it's not, there's, there's nothing specific, substantive that people want to spend the money on. People yeah. really don't know what to do. Nobody wants to say no to free money. Yeah. Go up. Two. We'll get in. What are you optimistic about? Not very much, no. <laughs> yeah, I probably am optimistic. I guess I should be optimistic about our chances to... Out of the prospects yes. of the buck. <laughs> no, no, yes, to, to, to convince people that they have to, they have to look for, yeah, for new, new ideas, fresh ideas. Hello. Hello. Welcome Hello. to our lab. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Blue. Welcome Hi. to the robotics lab at Columbia University. Hi. Hi. I'm Austin. Hi. Hi. Peter Thiel. Peter, nice Hi. to meet you. So, uh, so the, the chess set is your what is this too? <laughs> it's like <laughs> so we so have the, we have the robot yes. saying hi to you. Yes, yeah. hi to us. <laughs> but this is actually some of the, the the newer stuff. I thought maybe I'd, I'd give you a little bit of the older stuff first Oldest. that we used. When you say to older, do. you mean what? Uh, back early 90s, maybe even early late 90s. 80s. That's old. You're gonna, you're gonna see an ancient robot here. Yeah, it's um, ancient robots, early 90s. It, it might look like a little Mars rover to yeah. you. And uh, you could take the camera, and if you drive the robot around, just using vision alone, you can sort of figure out how it's moving and, and mm -hmm. sort of map the environment. And it, could, it can move autonomously, it can avoid bound, uh, uh, obstacles and stuff like that. I could put a little object in front of it, and it'll just try and keep a distance from the object. This robot's called the Avenue. So, it, used to, it has a GPS, and it has one of these 360-degree camera. So you see this guy's playing around. Yes. <laughs> so he'll just play around for a little bit. So this is a little bit, some of the older research. Some of the newer stuff is dealing with the robotic hands. Uh, one of the main features about this hand is it only has one motor per finger, as opposed to having a motor at every joint. So we don't get as fine a control over the hand as we might otherwise, mm -hmm. but it's a lot simpler to build and to control. But, but this is still, you know, it's still very much in um, product of the labs. So yes. you don't see it, you know, in, in our ordinary lives. So, it's, so there's not much progress in the last 40 years. In the last? Well, <laughs> no, I'm again. That's a provocative question. Yeah, just in terms of uh, uh, um, applications. In terms of applications, you can do things now that would have taken you months to do before in an afternoon. It's the same as computers were in labs in the '60s, and it took basically 40 years to become mm. a, a thing you needed at home. We're far away from telling your robot to go get you the paper, and and it's you know just all the little things that we could do so easily. When do we have a Jetsons type robot? What's your what's your over under estimate? What year? What year? Is it 2020, 2030, 2100? I would say by 2050 you'll have something that's not as capable as Rosie, but it can at least but, okay, get around. Okay. My, my question was as capable as Rosie on the Jetsons. Rosie had AI. Rosie had emotions. Rosie got lonely. I don't know that you want a robot that gets lonely in your house. But it's a little bit scary. Realistically, the robotic cars, right? Like the, Dar the DARPA Grand Challenge, if you're yeah. familiar with that, and, and yes. Google, Google recently yes. admitted yeah. that, like, I think that's within probably 10 years at least. I mean, yeah. and that's impressive. So. There's nothing about technology that automatically cuts in one direction or another. Uh, it's, it's generally been on the side of freedom, but it can also be used very much the other way. And this is, I think, one of the reasons we should not be simply utopian about technology. Um, it is critical uh, for us to be using the technology, for us to be the first ones to use it, and for us to be using it now. Thank you very much. If you look at the, at, at the most of the, uh, of the modern technologies now, like GPS or Internet, they're all, they're all were byproducts of the space race. I mean, byproducts. <laughs> it was internet was ARPANET was just you know it's a side it's a side project for for, but the effect, for DARPA. The effect you've had on our lives. I mean, can you remember a time without a cell phone or without Googling? Yeah, but cell phone, but it's still it, changed everything. Yes, but cell phone. The first the first uh, telephone call in this country was registered in 1973. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, people believe that a new uh, you know iPhone or iPad. It's it's a great technology, which is okay. It's. What, what, what your new computer cannot do, uh, ca can do that computers 25 years couldn't do? I mean, speed, but... Right. You mean like yeah. influence people's life more thoroughly, yeah, like more like, deeply? Like yeah, more deeply. Changes. Again, this is horizontal. It, was, it's, it's not vertical. We are still behind because you look at the science fiction of the 50s, 70s, 60s, you know, by, by 2010, I mean, this, this robots would be everywhere. Yeah. In 1927, Charles Lindbergh across the Atlantic. Yeah. Now, 42 years, 1927, 1969, Boeing 747. Another 42 years, 69, 2011, yeah. same planes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean.
push the frontiers. Well, that's the thing. One day you'll just wake up and there'll be a cure for cancer and, you know... Yeah, but I mean, by the way, what U.S. that... It, it, it's a good trivia question. What U.S. president uh, declared war on cancer to be one in five years? Mm, either Reagan or Nixon. No, Nixon, 1971. Nixon. Now, did we make much success in 40 years? Well... A lot of pro but still, you know, well, we, we just are, definitely we are, we, are, we are 39 years closer to defeating cancer by definition. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on, the, on the other hand, on the other hand, um, uh, it would be uh, nobody today would ever dare say, you know, it would be inconceivable for Obama or any president to get on TV today and say we'll defeat cancer in five years. People no longer no, believe sorry. in something like that. It would be, uh, you, you, would, you, would look, uh, you would look insane if you were to do that. Sure. Sorry. Cool, <laughs> long discussion. Well, let's make a picture. Right. Thank you all. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah, okay, guys. Let's move. Nice that was awesome. Guys. Hope you guys have fun. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. See, it's another proof, you know. It's, 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 uh, it's generational. They have no problem of, of, of accepting the, the philosophy. Right. Because they're young. They're not responsible. All right. Actually, one interesting question on the computer chess thing is even though they've gotten somewhat better than humans, there's a question whether they're still improving dramatically or whether, they, whether that, uh, that process has sort of... Uh, no, Rybka, Rybka is, 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 is a phenomenal improvement. Is it really? Rybka, yeah, Rybka is really good, really good. People typically think of the computers getting better at chess as being symbolic of no, but it's, computers it's, it's getting better chess, at everything. No, chess, chess has this the ultimate sign of wisdom so just mm -hmm. or intellect yes so that's why uh, chess uh, could be a, an ideal playground to measure computers progress yes. because there's a result so yes computer wins computer is, is is great right right and it's i think it's it's, it's very much perception so chess stood for generations for decades uh, maybe even for centuries, as an ultimate test for intellect. Well, you know, chess is still, it's still very big. This is the thing. It's still oh, it's anything it's, bigger uh, than uh, ever. If you add internet, it's what, 1.5 million games a day played on, played on internet. President of the club, yes. Mr. Hi, Thiel. Thiel. Hey, welcome to the Marshall Chess Club. Come in. Actually, I don't think I've ever been here, yeah? I don't think you ever have. Yeah, I was in Manhattan Club. Yes. Yeah, well, it's in, we... in 80, 80, 88 that yes. when I first time well, arrived in America. We've been here since 1931. 1931. I'll show you around. I'm still here. We're still